Greetings, everybody. It is the Doctor. Welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online 2015 Free to Play. In the last mission, we did diplomatic orders, found out Soketh was an Undine. The Klingons were right all along. We should have listened to them, but of course, the Federation did not. Now, uh, something I haven't shown you yet is the order of missions. When you go to hail Starfleet up here and you go to episodes, uh, we are under the Klingon War. This is the very beginning uh, front, basically, that you play on. And as you can see, we did Welcome to Earth Space Dock. We did Stranded in Space. We did Diplomatic Orders. Now it's time for Hide and Seek. So that is what we're going to do today. Coded messages sent by an Undine infiltrator lead you to a distant nebula where enemies lie in wait. Lieutenant, this mission briefing is classified. Starfleet Intelligence has been working on cracking the coded messages sent by the Undine agent and exposed at Pajem, and we think we have something. There are several references to the Paulson Nebula in the data. That is an area of space near the Lackey system that we don't know much about. Starfleet needs you to survey the nebula and find out why the Undine have an interest in it. Be careful. When the Enterprise D was in the area, it reported that the composition of the clouds may screen opponents from your sensors. Interesting that they would think that I know who or what the Enterprise D was. Remember, this is like 30 or 50 years after, uh, I guess it'd be about 50 years or more, after the events of Enterprise D. So that would be uh, well into the history books. So I guess I learned that in school, <laughs> apparently. Go to the Lackey system in the Beta Quadrant and investigate the Paulson Nebula. We will get another impulse engine and a phaser stun pistol. These actually don't look as good of rewards as I already have on my character, but we'll compare them at the end of the mission. If nothing else, we'll sell them for energy credits. Okay, so we go to Sector Space and we'll find the Lackey system. Which is here. Traveling at warp 5.62 will take us a little bit of time to get there. Yes, you can transwarp there. It does cost energy credits. And uh, right now, those are a commodity. And in fact, I don't even have enough to do it. So there you go. Yes, I still have skill points left to spend. Uh, again, I'm going to wait here until I can figure out where I really want them to go. I got weapon proficiency maxed out, so I'll be good on ground. And I already have attack patterns and weapons training maxed. So my attack pattern alpha and my weapons energy are very good. So that's all fine and good. I've spent so much time working on this character that um, it, it's really a, a whaled oil machine at this point. Everything is as smooth and good as it can be. Excellent. I like that. All my characters have stuff they need. One thing I could do, maybe I'll do at the end of this mission, is buy everybody a Tribble. Tribbles can give you buffs. They can help you. So uh, I could give all of my bridge officers a Tribble, which would uh, definitely help them. And I could give myself a Tribble. Um, also, at the end of this mission, we'll go ahead and look through the Z store, see if there's anything I can claim for free as a free-to-play character. Uh, sometimes they are, they, I have heard that they might, there might be stuff in the Z store that we can actually claim as a free-to-play character or on a free-to-play account that they give you for free now. They didn't used to, but I guess they do now. I don't know. We'll look at it and see because I'm not quite sure what, what a free-to-play player would have available in there. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this. Begin hide and seek. Sir, we are receiving a distress signal from the USS Valor. They are under attack by Gorn and their shields are failing, Captain. They can't take much more. Well, let's go save them. 
Now I've got my much more fancy and powerful uh, attack pattern alpha. Ship is under attack. Target shield has failed. Check that out. That enemy went bye-bye. That's the last of the Gorn. We should check on the Valor. Okay, by all means, please check on the Valor. I hate having to wait for the red alert to go away. Thank you for the assist, Rami Summers. Our ship is on a mission to map the Pulse of Nebula. Unfortunately, we failed to adequately compensate for the power drain the Nebula had on our engines. We retreated from the Nebula to make repairs. And that's when we stumbled upon the illegal Gorn mining operation. Presumably, the Gorn didn't take that well. If you hadn't showed up when you did, Lieutenant, we'd be sucking vacuum. Well, um, okay. Our chief engineer says there's no way we can make it back to a starbase. In fact, without new dilithium crystals, we're stuck. Well, it sounds like we arrived just in the nick of time. There are crystals on some of the larger asteroids here. That's why we headed for this location in the first place. If you could gather some crystals for us, we could make it to safety. Send us a hail if you have any questions about the nebula. We'd be happy to share our data. We can't give you any dilithium without shutting down our engines, which is too risky. We'll collect some dilithium from the asteroids. Okay. So this one. The dilithium is not exceptionally pure, but a few more loads of cracked ore should be enough. Okay, we've got, we've got an enemy here. Warning, ship is under attack. Stuck behind a rock. I hate it when they do that. Get stuck on a rock like that. <laughs> Come on. Target shields have failed. Wow, he's tough. This is a bigger one. He needs a high yield torpedo. There we go. That was a lot more difficult. All right, last one. Man, I can't imagine trying to uh, fight all these enemies without having done all the skill points we've added, everything we've done so far. And they're still that hard to take out. So really, if you don't take care of your characters and gear them right and skill them right, I can see how people would have a difficult time in this game and probably quit it simply because it's uh, they're blowing up all the time. Come on. Hit him with the with the shield down. Hit him with the shield down. Come on, you can do it. There we go. That's a good hit. Get him too close now. Nice. There we go. Okay, deliver dilithium to the Valor.
We're in your debt. This is enough dilithium to get our warp engines restarted. After we finish preliminary repairs, we'll set course for Starbase 157. If you want to go to the Pulsar Nebula, your engines will need a boost. I recommend you visit Lackey 3. The Gorn drove out the Federation miners there and took over a decalithium processing facility. It's only fair that you take some of our crystals back. Alright, let's go to Lackey 3. We're already making an impact in the grand scheme of things. All right, Captain, the decalithium processing facility is dead ahead. The Gorn have numerous structures in the debris field. We're also picking up several fighters and frigates. They know they're in Federation territory and they're trying to peck, protect their ill, excuse me, their ill-gotten gains. I advise we approach with caution. Here I am, Lieutenant 8, and I am already really helping the Federation out quite a bit. Rescuing people, we got Commander, we got brought, we found a traitor in the mist with Sokath, and here we are helping another Federation captain. Pretty awesome. Warning, ship is under attack. Target's shields have failed. That ship went bye bye. <laughs> Fast. Did not last long. Attempt to beam up decalithium from the Gorn refinery. Okay, attempting. Some kind of interference field is preventing transporter lock. It must be coming from a nearby facility. Lieutenant, we can't get a lock on the decalithium. Something's jamming our ability to lock up, lock and beam it up. Probably a nearby jamming station. Detecting some suspicious tachyon emissions and signs of Klingon technology. This is more than a simple Gorn mining operation. We need to destroy that jamming station to get the decalithium. We may not be able to beam the decalithium up, but it won't stop us from beaming a spatial charge down. The charges are prepared and we can beam them over as soon as we're in transporter range. You can use scanners to find nearby objects. This is especially useful if the objective above is, is above or below you. Why, thank you. Take out this ship before we beam down the explosives. Warning, ship is under attack. Target's shield has failed. Okay, explodey, explodey. Now we can beam up the decalithium from the Gorn refinery. Of course, we've got a, a couple of frigates to take care of now, but no problem. Warning, ship is under attack. Target's shield has failed. Okay, we did it. Now we can warp to the Pulsan Nebula. The Decalithium crystals are uh, doing the trick, sir. Engine efficiency has increased by 4.7%, and we should be able to boost the impulse drive enough to deal with the effects of the Nebula. Coordinates from the Valor are locked in, and we are ready to go to warp at your orders. Okay, let's go to the Pulsan Nebula. Captain, scanners show that the amount of metallic density of this region is much higher than would be expected for a nebula of this class. There's definitely something big here, and it might be hidden on another high-density object. We should scan all high-density objects in the vicinity. 
Well, that could take a long time if there's a lot of objects. But there's only three, so we're okay. If the Klingons have a listening post here, that means Klingon ships possibly cloaked. Scan the ruined mind. This mine is played out and abandoned. Okay. And would those be those Klingon ships you were talking about? Because <laughs> they are right there. Burrell Bird of Prey. Yep. Let's get my power back up. Come on, power. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to stay out of range until my power comes back up. I need an EPS console. Warning. Ship is under attack. Target's shields have failed. Well, that wasn't too bad. How did the Klingons even manage to build an outpost this deep in Federation space? Good question. This is an old 22nd century satellite deployed when this area of space was not well known. It's no longer operational. I see. That is a big ship. And uh, we need to get some gas. So let's get this hydrazine gas, shall we? Excellent. My um, alpha is not recharged yet. Warning. Ship is under attack. Accolade complete. Strike and Target's jump. shield has failed. I've dealt a hundred thousand phaser damage. Nice. And they're dead. Oh crap, there's mines everywhere. I didn't see the mines. Sir, I found something. This asteroid is surrounded by gravatic mines of Klingon manufacture. No kidding, they're, um, hit, they're striking my ship at this time. What's more, there appears to be some kind of structure on the surface, and we've detected several Klingon life signs within. Are we picking up transmissions from the Klingon outpost? Judging by the high-frequency transmissions, I'd wager that the structure is some sort of listening station. I recommend we carefully punch a hole in that minefield and send an away team to the surface. Well... Consider that hole punched, because I flew through it instead. Let's get some Klingons. This will be a glorious battle. And it will in fact be extremely easy. <laughs> Knocked them all out with a grenade. How awesome is that? Okay, let's wait. Let's do the sword master later. Let's get these guys down here first. Flanking damage detected. Or he will come now. He went down fast. He went down real fast. Just want to make sure there's no Klingons and nothing to loot around here before I continue. See, there's a lootable. There's a lootable. Hello, lootable. Two small hypos. I'll take it. And nothing up here. There's a scannable. I'm stuck. What am I stuck on? 
That was weird. Okay, let's go scan this thing here real quick. Okay. Transmit data. We can upload these records to our computers for analysis, but it will take some time. We'll need to defend the core until the download is complete. Okay, let's do that, and let's do that. That was easy, I'm telling you. This game can be pretty easy if you set your crew up right like this. Set your bridge officers and yourself up right. And um, you can have a lot of fun fun times. I mean, you see how easy it is for me to take down these Klingons with my current setup. More Klingons are mobilizing. Bring them on, I say. Bring them on. Man, they did not last long. Accolade complete. Hacking a way through the nebula. We've downloaded the data, sir. I recommend that we get it to Starfleet Intelligence as soon as possible. Rami Summers to Andromeda. The away team's ready to beam up. The Andromeda is picking up several Klingon ships inbound. If we leave now, we can be gone before they arrive. Okay, depart system. So we found a hidden Klingon base deep in Federation space. The war is on. That's actually the end of the mission. C kind of abrupt there, but... Okay, let's see. Well done. Starfleet will analyze the data from the listening post. With luck, there will be something there that will help us in our fight against the Klingons. Skill points, expertise, we're going to get an Impulse Engine Mark II with a speed modifier. A phaser stun pistol Mark II with a damage modifier and dilithium ore. Congratulations, Lieutenant. And I, in fact, have now leveled up. I am Lieutenant 9. Lieutenant 9. Don't get any rewards for that, but when we hit Lieutenant when we hit 10 and become a Lieutenant Commander, we get our next new ship. That's right, already we will get our next new ship. And a new trait slot. So um, that'll be fun, because the starter ship here is really no fun. Nobody likes it. But, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? Okay, let's see what we got, and let's compare it with what we have. This is a an impulse engine with a speed modifier. They're both Mark II. They're both uncommon. This one, though, it, one is a hyper impulse engine. One is a regular impulse engine. One has a turn modifier. One has a speed modifier. Uh, to be honest with you, one will increase my flight speed, one increases my turn rate. But look at the difference. This is interesting. Check this out. I'm going to go with the Impulse Engine Mark II speed. Here's why. First of all, the turn rate is higher with the, higher, with the Hyper Impulse Engine, but it's 0.4, whereas the... Impulse Engine Mark II also has a turn rate increase. It is 0.38. That is only a 0.02 difference. That's not a difference you will actually feel or detect or that will make any difference on the ship. However, that flight speed will make a difference. There's a bigger difference in the flight speed. The Impulse Engine here has a plus 9 flight speed. The one I have on now is plus 7.8. That is a bigger difference. That is going to make a bigger difference for my ship. So I will only lose 0.02 flight turn rate, but I will gain flight speed. So heck yeah, I'm changing that engine out. There we go. Done. Next is the Phaser Stun Pistol Mark II damage. Now... I know it is a Mark II Uncommon, and everybody's got a Mark I Uncommon, except for to, uh, Colas, and this is a Mark II, but it's a Phaser Stun Pistol. Not something that's really going to benefit uh, any of our characters here. So I'm going to bypass it, and I'm going to sell it for energy credits. 
Also, I'll sell the engine. I'll sell everything else here because I don't need anything else here. So, yeah, everything here is going to be sold for energy credits. And we're already up to 1,100 refined dilithium. As for my skill points, I have gained more, obviously. I can start putting more in. I'm probably going to go with... Boy, you know what? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know where I want them right now, to be honest with you. I'm going to wait for a couple more episodes and try to think about it because uh, I'm not sure where I want to put the next set of skill points. I was thinking shield emitters or hole repair, maybe both of those. Um, that will help science team, that'll help engineering team, which I don't even have those options yet, so that's why it won't benefit me right now. I'm not going to use starship batteries, not a big battery person. Driver coil, it would help me, but really it only helps with faster sector space travel, so not a huge benefit there. I think that would be a waste. So I'm going to hold off for a minute and uh, see. Um, but anyway, that was Hide and Seek. Thank you all for watching. In the next episode, I will play Stop the Signal. And uh, let's see what else after that. We've got Stop the Signal. And then Researcher Rescue. And then the Kuvik Maw. So I'm going to do a, you know, a couple of, uh, of missions. And then I will figure out where I want to put those skill points because right now putting them they're not going to help me in anything right now so might as well wait for a little bit and at least wait till we get to the next level lieutenant I mean lieutenant commander 10 and then I'll get my new ship and then when I get my new ship I will have new powers that I'll use on it and then I can figure out where those skill points will fit so that's what I'll do is I'll wait till then also uh, I will just go ahead and sell these things off camera. No need to do it. No need to record it. I'm just going to go after the, after I shut the uh, recording off here. I'm just going to go sell these. And then uh, I will be able to start the next mission. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.